pace laps are underway. And here's how they will line up for the 15th Freedom 100, winning the pole in his first oval start. Mateus laced. Colton Herta actually almost spun on his outlap. They go straight out on the track. He had got through the grass and ended up on the warm-up lane. And he said that cost him on his first lap. So watch Colton Herta. He is going to be fast. And then in row two, you have two drivers from Andretti Autosports with their best starts this season. Dalton Kellett and Ryan Norman both showing so well. They've looked really, really handy in traffic as well. So I think that they're going to be strong throughout the running of this race. In row three, Zachary Clayman DeMello also making his best start of 2017. And Aaron Tielitz, who won the opener and has gone through some issues here recently, but he has won an oval race at Lucas Oil Raceway at USF 2000. He has, and he's going to be strong. He's representing Mazda in those sole red colors. He won the Pro Mazda Championship last year, has always been a front runner, and uh, making his Freedom 100 debut here. In row number four, Neil Alberico and Garth Rickards. Alberico said he feels pretty comfortable. A second year driver experience is so important here. And Shelby Blackstock ran in that lead pack last year. And so did Juan Pedrahita. He was second going to the final restart. The points leader, the championship leader, Kyle Kaiser, and last year's runner up, Santi Arutia, all the way back in row number six. Nico Jamin has won a couple of times this year. So we've got a lot of depth through this field and some guys we think could get to the front starting in the back. Our onboard is with Nico Jamin, the Frenchman with Andretti Auto Sports. 21 years old. He won on the road course here, the first of two this month as part of the IndyCar GP weekend. All right, it's time to find out what needs to happen. The keys to this race, here's Andrew's insider. Well, Kevin, the Freedom 100 is all about one thing and one thing only. Forget about the championship. None of these drivers care about the points today. The only thing they care about is getting this big win at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's a 40 lap race. It's the longest race on the Indy Lights calendar. So these guys want to conserve their equipment throughout the course of this race to make sure that they can be there on the final 10 to five laps. Now, leading up to this week, it's been such tough conditions. There's been wind, there's been rain, and today is actually the only nice day with no wind whatsoever. So I think all of these guys don't know exactly what they have underneath them as far as the car setup is concerned. So let's pay attention to who's got it right and who hasn't. Well, we were concerned about the weather for this day all week, but once again, they've cooperated. It's perfect sunny in 74. They're starting to get lined up, and we're about ready to go for what we think is one of the best, if not the best race you will see all year long. I can absolutely attest to that. I did this race back in 2011, and it is the single coolest race you can be part of, shy of doing the Indy 500, that is. The darker blue car on the inside is Mateus Lace, the white and blue car with Andretti and a partnership with the Steinbrenner family. George Michael Steinbrenner the fourth on the outside. That's Teal, it's taking a peek already to the outside, and it's go time in Indianapolis for Indy Lights. The Freedom 100 is green. Clayman DeMello in the 13 blue car, peeks to the outside, they sweep around Colton Herta. Dalton Kellett going side by side for that third position with his teammate, but up front it's the pole sitter, Mateus Lace gets the early jump. Oh, we have contact! Herta spins! And he collects his teammate, Ryan Norman. Oh, Colton Herta just up on the high side, entering turn two, then turned down. And unfortunately, it was a car on the inside there, and that clipped him and spun him right around. We already see Colton Herta moving around in that car. That's uh, that's a good sign. That was a, that was a pretty big hit there, Kev. And Ryan Norman had his best start of his rookie season in Indy Lights, and nothing he could do after Herta spins. He simply a casually, two quick cars are out. Herta was over 200 miles per hour in practice. As I mentioned, he might have been the quickest making really his first oval start. He said, I'm not sure that that Lucas Oil Raceway, USF 2000, uh, provided any kind of similar experience. And oh, Dalton Kellett was on his inside there. Did they make any contact? They, they did, and uh, yeah, Colton Hurd had just turned down on Dalton Kellett. So I'm not sure if maybe that's the spotter told him he was clear and he tried to turn down, or if he was just trying to squeeze Dalton Kellett down onto the apron. But either way, we were talking about conservation of equipment. That's something you don't want to do on the opening lap. You can't be that aggressive early on. And then watch, too, as Norman slides down. He almost took Shelby Blackstock with him, but I think he missed him. We'll see if Kellett has any kind of damage. Norman getting collected. 
Norman. Norman coming down, and three cars barely miss him. Pedrahita in the yellow car. The 11 car is Garth Rickards. The red car, Shelby Blackstock. Talk about a save for Dalton Kellett. I mean, he was sideways swell and just managed to correct that and then went to the high side of Colton Herta. But a big hit here for Ryan Norman as we see the slow-mo up on the top of our screen here. So just like that, the field dwindles to 12. And a little further back, we're going to get a nice vantage point from Nico Jamin, who started in the last row. This is his onboard. So lucky not, get, not to get caught up in, a, in all of this stuff. You see carbon fiber pieces flying all over the track, but that was a smart move there for Nico Jamin. His spotter would have been at the top of the track there, telling him to just go down low. And uh, we see Colton Herta's dad here, Brian Herta, and, and Michael Andretti in the background not happy with this at all. It's, it's been a disastrous month yeah. of, of May for Colton Herta. I mean, he's been so quick to start the season, got a win in St. Petersburg, looked so strong as well at Barber, and uh, then Indianapolis happened, and, and it's been... It's it's been cruel, hasn't it? Mechanical issues in the GP, 12th and 10th, and a DNF here in the Freedom 100. So we're under yellow almost as soon as we get started. A restart is coming up from Indy. It's carb day in Indianapolis. Everyone is excused from any productivity today. Take the rest of the day off. Indianapolis has joined us today for the final IndyCar practice and the biggest race of the year in the top step of the Mazda Road to Indy, the Freedom 100 for Indy Lights. But as soon as we went green, a yellow. Colton Herta coming down a little bit on his teammate, it appears. Dalton Kellitz. he loses it, takes another teammate. Ryan Norman in that orange and black car trailing behind. All right, to Pitt Road, let's talk with one of the principals of the Andretti Autosport IndyCar team and the dad of one of the drivers affected. Katie. And Kevin, we're used to talking to Brian during some positive situations like Colton's two wins, but Brian, what do you think happened in that incident? What was Colton thinking, maybe? <laughs> well, I, I don't know that I can say what Colton's thinking, but uh, you know, it's a shame because he had a great, great car, obviously. He's out of the race. Brian Norman's out of the race. He had a great car. Uh, you know, just looking at it just on the replay, you know, it looks like uh, maybe he didn't know that Dalton was still on the inside of him there. I don't know if the spotter was talking to him. It's it's just not, you know, it's not how you want to start the race here. And uh, it's a long race, and unfortunately, he's out early. And this is a really hard track to spot at. Were you listening to the radio? No, I'm not on the headset, so I only see now just, just what you guys have looked at. And like I said, just look like he didn't know Dalton was still down there. Uh, but. You know, better to ask him what, what he thought. I'm just glad everybody's okay. What will you say to him to pick his spirits back up? Get ready for the next one. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. You know, I know that's one of the things that Brian has been telling Colton is you've had bad luck, but at least you've been quick. That's something as a development series you want to see. All right, we're going to go and get ready to restart in just a moment. So we'll stand by for that. And it's one to go at the line. Mateus Lace managed the lead. These are his first laps led in Indy Lights. And we welcome in the booth and we'll chat with them after we get going in this restart more extensively. Last year's runner up, IndyCar rookie Ed Jones from Dale Coyne Racing is with us and former mechanic and engineer, and now journalist with Racer Magazine and Racer.com. Marshall Pruitt is with us too. Ed, thanks for joining us. Uh, are you ready for this perspective? You may see how crazy you guys are. Yeah, it's great to be here. And I remember last year, this was the biggest race I'd done in my junior, junior career. Um, the atmosphere, you know, going on the formation lap, seeing the massive crowds since the first time, and I just wish I could do it again as well. <laughs> Marshall, what are you expecting? I'm expecting Lace to uh, really impress. His straight line speed has been something. Uh, Zachary Cleveland DeMello, I'll tell you, he's someone who wasn't on my radar for a big Freedom 100 standout performance. I am wrong. Mateus Lace is just 18 years old. He's living in Miami now. He said he's, he's feeling more at home. That's more similar to Brazil than when he lived in England. Yeah, but I think speaking of Mateus Leist, he was so impressive when he first came over to the U.S. and did his first oval test at Homestead Miami Speedway. And I think it's very much, and Ed, you can speak to this, it's very much one of those things where as soon as you get to an oval, you either absolutely love it or you're going to hate it. And clearly, he loves it. Yeah, exactly. You know, the first time I went to Homestead, actually, I found it quite tough, you know, because it was Carlin's first year, first time on an oval as well. So we didn't quite have the car car right, and it was my first time, so everything was learning. Whereas now, we built a solid car with Carlin, and 
I guess the first time out, he, he, he did a really good job. And you can see now at the Freedom 100, they're, they're one, two. Yeah, that's your former team, Carlin Racing. The teammates are running up front with Laced and Clayman DeMello. Dalton Kellett still running in third. Neil Alberico, another Carlin car, is in fourth position. Then it's Aaron Tielitz back there in the sole red car. The yellow car is Juan Pedrajita. Garth Rickards is in seventh. Lined up, single file restart is coming as they roll through the north end of the racetrack, come back on the main straightaway. Laced will control this restart, working on lap number five, and we are green again at Indianapolis. Here we go in the Freedom 100. Let's see if he manages to hold that lead into turn one. It looks like he does. Great restart for him, but side by side with Dalton Kellett and Neil Alberico going through one. Alberico to the high side, gets a spot past Kellett. Alberico moves into third, and it's one, two, three for Carlin Racing. And Mateus Laced is just gone. The other guys can't even stay in his draft. Can you set up the car, Marshall, a little bit differently when you start up front and think you might stay up front? Not only that, these tires uh, have a slight change from last year, Kevin. Same spring rate, but they'll be looking at tire degradation. We, we've seen so far the Carlin cars appear to have gotten these tires perfect. Be interesting to see if some of the other teams can move forward, though. That gold car, similar to James Hinchcliffe's paint scheme, same sponsorship with Schmidt Peterson and with Bellardi now, uh, is, is Santi Arutia, who had a very, again, disappointing qualifying session. Want to see what he can do as he makes a move back in the pack. Yeah, I spoke to him a little bit earlier, and he said he's got a great race car, not one that he could qualify well with, which clearly showed on, on the timesheets, but he feels like he can place his car anywhere. And that's being shown here. Look at how high of a line he's running through turn two there, just getting clean air on those wings, getting no turbulent air whatsoever. Dalton Kellett in that turquoise car going to the outside and making a move on Alberico. They're going to stay side by side through the corner. Gotta, Kellett gets the spot. Got to be careful not to bind each other up too much because if you run too long side by side, you're going to be holding yourselves up there. But uh, Dalton Kellett, he's got something here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He got his first ever Indy Lights podium here last year. And again, he's running so well. And now Tealitz looking to the outside of Alberico. Pedrahita in the yellow car is lurking behind. Ed, you can't do this in IndyCar. Yeah. What's it like going on the high side through a corner in the lights car? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, um, obviously last year coming to the finish, we were side by side the whole way around three and four. So yeah, it's a lot of fun doing it. Um, it's interesting to see how the race is panning out at the moment. Um, it looks like similar to last year, the Carlin guys, we were really strong early on in the race. But I think the ones to look out for, Kelly and the Andretti car, who, they came on really strong. And uh, also the Pelfrey car and Pedro Hida, I remember last year, first half of the race they were a bit behind and then all of a sudden towards the end they made a big charge so um, yeah it'll be interesting to see how they get on. Pedrahita working on Alberico side by side as they go into one and this time Alberico is not going to see the position and he's going to scoot back in front. Tire management part of the storyline how much does it impact the Cooper tires if you spend a lot of time on the high line going side by side? Yeah obviously the tires are different this year but um, we had to try and not do it too much because you're trying to wear them out quicker. Um, I was quite fortunate for most of the race was running first and second, so we, we're kind of trying to stay in that position, whereas these guys trying to move forward, it makes it a bit more wearing on the tyres, and they might struggle towards the end of the race. As we watch Santi Arutia, Marshall, any idea from when you've talked to Brian Bellardi or the team, this is one of the surprises. Now, he has had some bad luck. He's been collected, but they haven't quite had the pace that we expected for the team or for him. Keep in mind, he's coming off the dominant Sam Schmidt team, the Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports team, one that's just rolled through Indy Lights for many years. You go from a, a near championship, last lap, almost final corners last year to heartbreak, had to switch teams. This is getting to know new people. This is getting to build on something brand new. Now, Marshall, you're a bit of a historian. You know, I'm looking at Mateus laced up front. And I'm thinking of one other Indy Lights driver that used to dominate this race, not just once, not twice, but three times, and that's Wade Cunningham. Absolutely. And, well, we'll have to get Mateus a really interesting cat to uh, go with Wade's <laughs> collection. But one of the interesting things here, guys, and I definitely know you're looking at this too, some are being aggressive. We're watching Aaron Tielich, for example. He's pushing really hard in the beginning. You'd love to see that fighting spirit, but you're also wondering, should his spotters, should his engineers be saying, all right, Now's not the time. We don't need to see these big moves on the steering wheel, these hard passes. Take it easy and breathe. We're getting close to that point where we're going to start pushing hard. 
Anders, where do you feel like you want to run? And Ed, jump on on this too. Where do you want to be at this point in the race, taking everything else into consideration? Well, you really just want clean air on your wings. That means that you have a lot of aero on your car, and we see Aaron Tielitz here trying to find some clean air down the bottom of the racetrack. But yeah, you want to be in as much clean air as, as absolutely possible just to keep the tires underneath you. All right, there we see Colton Herta and Ryan Norman back by the care center, and Jan Bikas is with them. Yes, they've both been released. We'll start with uh, Colton, and I see you've got some ice here on your wrist. Is everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I took a little x-ray, but it was uh, no problem, so. Were you aware that there was a car underneath you? Did your spotter tell you uh, whether you were clear or whether there was something there? Yeah, no, I saw him, but uh, I, I don't really know what happened. I'll have to look at the data and look at the video. So it was Dalton Kellett, I believe, and there was actual contact that spun you, correct? Yep. So other than this, uh, you're A-OK? -okay? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, sorry you're out early. And Ryan, um, you obviously took a brunt of the, the no place you could go. Uh, physically OK? Yeah, I'm physically fine. Just really disappointed. It was our highest starting position of the year, so it kind of sucks. But um, it was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Just Colton's car was kind of coming up, and just I was pinched into the wall and had nowhere to go. But I just want to thank Andretti Autosport. They had a great car this whole entire month so far. So I guess we'll just come back stronger at Road America. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Jan. Ryan Norman, a 19-year-old from Ohio, as he said, had a great opportunity. Not going to happen for him here today. Well, this is the first oval for Mateus Lace, and he's cruising in a battle for second now as Dalton Kellett goes to the low line, and he'll get the spot on Zach Clayman de Mello. Beautiful move there for Dalton Kellett, and this is where he came alive in last year's race as well, towards the tail end of it. It took him a few laps to figure it all out, but I think he's got a good ear there in, in Mike Reggio, who's his head engineer, is probably telling him exactly what to do with the weight jackers and bars. It's starting to get good. We'll keep an eye on Aaron Tielitz, and can Dalton Kellett chase down the leader? Stay Stay with us for the Freedom 100 from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Carb Day continues from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is the Indy Lights Freedom 100. I'm Kevin Lee, Anders Krohn, Ed Jones, Marshall Pruitt, Katie Hargett, and Jan Bikas on pit road. Townsend Bell, part of Paul Tracy, and Marty Snyder will be back along with Robin Mill a little bit later on. Mateus Lay started from the pole. He has led all 16 laps. Dalton Kellett is running in second. Aaron Tielitz has worked his way up to third. Then it's Neil Alberico, and Zach Clayman DeMello has fallen from second to fifth. This is a great run so far for Dalton Kellett. His second year, last year he finished third in this race. This is not a big surprise. It's, it's not, and he's really come alive here on the ovals. He's, he's done so well here. At the moment, he's looking like he's got the strongest car. Mateus laced by far and away the quickest early on in this race, but now just looking at the cars, the lines that Dalton Kellett's able to take there up on the high side, that uh, that shows he's got a good car. And Aaron Tielitz as well, right on the gearbox of, uh, gearbox of Dalton. Darren Manning has spent a lot of time, the former IndyCar driver, working with Dalton Kellett, coaching him up, and he's made really good progress as he continues to go through. And then as we go a little further back, you have to go way back. Look for that green and white car. That's the championship leader, Kyle Kaiser, did not qualify well and has not made much progress in the race. Ninth, what's going on with Hunkos, Marshall? They're off by just a couple miles an hour. It doesn't take much. And as you guys know, here with these spec cars, you really have to be absolutely perfect. And here's a battle for second as Aaron Tielitz goes around the outside in the sole red car. The Pro Mazda champion last year has taken over second in the Freedom 100, and he's scooting away. Beautiful move there, and that's so unnerving for Dalton Kellett because as soon as Aaron Tielitz crosses over the front end of Dalton Kellett, he's going to lose all that clean air. So uh, Aaron Tielitz nicely done there into turn three and is now chasing down Mateus Laced. Just like that, we're just about halfway through this Freedom 100, a sprint race, no planned pit stops. Manage the tires, it's a long stint. Keep in mind the IndyCar drivers only go 28 to 32 laps in a stint, so the Cooper tires are asked to do a little bit more. But, but I was actually talking with someone yesterday that uh, I wonder if someone running towards the back of the field, if, if if we were to get a full course caution here, would they come in for four new tires and try and charge <laughs> through the field? What do you think, Marshall? I love your line of thinking, Anders. I would absolutely do that. If you, at this point, 
The only thing to do here is to win the Freedom 100. Second doesn't matter. We don't remember who finished the second. These kids need to win, so I love that idea. What's interesting watching here, though, we started off with a Carlin Armada, one, two, three up front. We've seen that pack break up. We've seen Mateus Lay stay there. Anders and Ed take us around on board with Nico Jameen. Yeah, so he, drank, he looks like he's turned in a little bit early there. The car looks like it's got a lot of push, which is making it more difficult. And I think that's why it seems like he's struggling to get to get onto the car in front there. Because he, he's having to turn a lot in the middle of the corner, which is scrubbing the car and uh, slowing you down. And like, he's just made an adjustment on his uh, front bar, so um, we'll see if that helps. Yeah, just like Ed said, he's got a lot of understeer. Not so much in turn three, but turn two was absolutely massive understeer, and that's something you cannot have here at the Freedom 100. And looking at, at Aaron Tielitz now, he's yep. right up the back of Mateus Laced. Laced is in that blue car with the orange mirrors, the number 26 for Carlin, the sole red, which designates a champion in the Mazda program. He has the scholarship money to move up to Indy Lights this year. The number nine is Aaron Tielitz, and he's within reach now, Mateus Laced. Just conserve your tires here, Aaron. You still have 18 laps to go in this race, and that's a long way to go still. Needs to keep track of those tires. Do not want to be too aggressive here. It's, it's been, it seemed like people that, um, so a few of the guys have been able to catch up to these, but then they've really struggled to get to pass them. And then it seems after a few laps, they started to drop back. So it'll be interesting to see if Tulitz can get past them. This was a couple of laps ago. Go back to this, and let's see if Laced hits some debris there. He yes. got something right on the tire. That That's not just a little bit of debris. That's a lot of it. And, yeah, big spark there. But it uh, doesn't appear as, he, as if he's got any damage to the to the front wing or, or floor of that car. That Carlin team is going to see that, though, and they're going to hold their breath the rest of the way. The straight line speed of Lace Car is truly impressive. One thing to note, we have rookies here, one, two. We have some veterans behind them that know what to do when we get down to the final laps. The real thing that's going to be interesting, though, good Lord, that wall's getting closer. Mateus, can you get around him? That that motor is screaming. Those uh, The aerodynamics are helping him to cut through the air. Beyond talent, beyond experience, he, he is a pretty powerful hot rod right now. And, and I think another reason why they're a little bit more spread out this year than they've been in years past is that the ambient temp is actually quite a lot warmer. And so that make, makes the air thinner and uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to follow the, the car directly ahead of you. But uh, Aaron Tielitz, I think if he were out in clean air right now, he might actually be able to pull away. But rightly so, uh, Marshall, it looks like Mateus Laced has an absolute bullet of an engine in that Carlin car. The other thing, too, if we just keep in mind of what we've seen so far through 24 laps, Tielitz has been doing a lot of passing. It's been hard on that steering wheel, carving in and out. That's using tires. You look at Mateus, he hasn't had that pressure. So I think if if Aaron can stay close in the next 10, 15 laps before he really starts to push for that win, then we could see something happen. But if he's going to keep charging like he is, I'm wondering if he's going to yeah. use up those Cooper tires. Katie Hargett has been monitoring the radio for late latest in uh, the 26 team and says, no conversation. They're not talking at all. Uh, so that's a positive on their front. As Mateus Lays continues to lead, he's been out front from the go. Aaron Tielitz has worked his way from sixth to second. A little further back, Santi Arutia is also a good mover from 12th to sixth. And he's working on Clayman DeMello right now, too. But to me, it just it, it doesn't look like he's got the speed that he needs to. And uh, let's check in with Katie. And no word over the radio yet for Mateus Lace, but Trevor Carlin, you guys came so close to winning this race last year with Ed Jones. What did you learn from that that you applied with Mateus this year? Well, to be honest, uh, what we learned last year doesn't really apply to today because it's a different race and different drivers, but uh, this is Mateus's first ever Indi uh, oval race, so it's going to be very difficult for him. But so far, he's doing a great job. Um, I hope he can be calm. If he loses the lead now, perhaps he can get it back on the last lap. That's the only lap that counts. And not only is Ed a good racer, he's upstairs in our booth. I didn't know if you knew. Okay, that's great. Hi, Ed. Hi, mate. <laughs> Say hello, Ed. I know he can't hear you. Yeah, he can't hear me. <laughs> uh, but he's one of the guys that helped get you where you're at yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. I spoke with Ed's IndyCar engineer, uh, who definitely had a lot of thanks to Trevor Carlin. The Carlin team said this kid right here next to me, impervious to pressure. How do you like that? Oh, he is. He's cool, and he's ready, and he's fast, and has got a chance to 
have an impact in his first 500. Thank you for joining us today. The biggest weekend in motorsports. We kick it off here at Indianapolis, Monaco, Charlotte this weekend. You'll see reports from all three locations coming up in our NASCAR America Motorsports Special at 3.30 today. But it is carb day at Indianapolis. We've already had the final IndyCar practice. The party continues after this race with the pit stop competition, music, and more. Stay with us from Indianapolis. Stay high, stay high. Back at Indianapolis, Carb Day and the Indy Lights Freedom 100 three quarters of the way through and it's heating up. Aaron Tielitz just made a little look at Mateus Lays to his lead from the jump starting from the pole, but Aaron Tielitz is on the charge. He is, and it was all about that run through turn three and turn four. He got the line perfect in turn four, got under the air of Mateus Laced, and therefore got a great run, and then Mateus Laced all the way down to the bottom of the track trying to protect his position, but he is truly under pressure now from Aaron Tielitz. He's feeling it. And they're bunching up Dalton Keldon, that aqua blue car running in third. The 28 for Andretti is not far back, and then behind him is Neil Alberico and another Carlin car. And that's Santi Arruti in the gold car taking a look on Clayman DeMello. That's a battle for fifth position. Yeah, Santi Arruti just cannot do anything at the moment. But pay attention, Aaron Tielitz, as he goes through turn two in that sole red Mazda car. He gets a big push, and that washes him up really, really wide. And as Marshall mentioned during the break, that's where he loses his time. But then come up here to turn three and turn four. That's where he picks up all his time. So now look at his line here as he manages to keep it so tight. And he might have a run here to come onto the front straight and draft up on the blue car of Mateus Laced. That's Anders Krohn, Marshall Pruitt from Racer Magazine is with us. I'm Kevin Lee, Ed Jones. Last year's Indy Lights champ is in the booth, a rookie in IndyCar. So what are they thinking right now? What's the strategy to well, start to think about the final lap? Yeah, well, it looks like Tillitz is going all out at the moment. He's not really holding back, and um, it seems really difficult to get by Lease. You know, um, that has seen the theme the whole race. No matter who's behind him, they've been able to catch, get close, but they haven't been able to pass. So I think Lease is just trying to stick to his same line. I know he has the same spot as I had last year, so he give, he's getting some great advice on what to do. Um, but it'll be interesting now, I think, as Tudis gets really close, um, maybe he can get a run now down in, onto the front straightaway. But um, 
Yeah, it's getting late now. There's not too many laps left, and I think he's desperate to try and make a move. While we watch this, let's check in with Katie. And you guys have been talking about how hard Mateus Laced has been to get around, and Aaron maybe giving him a hard time trying to get that lead. The team just came over the radio and said, we need you to go lower in one and three. As you see Aaron Tielitz make a pass for the lead, Kevin. Side by side, Tielitz in the sole red car to the outside. The blue car in the low line is Laced, who has dominated this race so far. Tielitz is trying to get to the front, can't quite get it done, and Lace hangs on to the lead in Indianapolis. But now Aaron Tielitz needs to suck up and go up to the high side again, keep it at Absolutely pinned on the high side here. This could be de the determining the winner here. He can't quite get it done around the up the outside here, but I think he might be able to get it lined up through turn four. Laced manages to maintain the advantage and then gaps it by three car lengths. Tielitz went after it, and that's opened up the door for Dalton Kellett in third, running side by side for second down the main straightaway. Yeah, it seems when anyone gets side by side with Least, Least just seems to keep the momentum up and keep, get back past them. That's the problem, usually you slipstream and then it's easy to, easy to pull out and get ahead, but that's not happening when people are running up on least. And listen to the crowd reacting to Dalton Kellett getting to second around Aaron Tielitz. Alberico in the blue car in fourth is lurking, and Santi Arutia has grabbed that fifth position. Still at least five in play in the Freedom 100, more than five laps remaining. Aaron Tielitz has lost all sorts of momentum, so I'm wondering if his tires have fallen off here. He looks like he's got nothing left in the bag whatsoever. Arutia working on Alberico. Alberico goes down near the pit wall divider to defend, and Arutia will still manage to squeak his way through on the inside. Can he make it stick side by side for fourth? And Arutia grabs the spot. Maybe this is all planned out here for Santi Arutia. Maybe Santi Arutia has hung back this entire time, saving his Cooper tires on this car. He's a rocket ship on the track at the moment. From 12th to 4th, it's been a nightmare season for the driver that was a lap away from winning the championship and the Mazda scholarship to get to IndyCar last year. Can this be the breakthrough for Santi Arutia? Still a lot of work to do. He's running fourth. Tielitz in third, Kellett in second. Laced the leader. There's Kellett in that aqua blue car. Second place with Tielitz trying to work on him once again. See, Tielitz is going to be frustrated right now because he's feeling like Dalton Kellett should be pushing Mateus Laced into making a mistake here. He's got to show his wing upside, downside. He's got to show his wing absolutely everywhere to stress Mateus Laced because I think on outright pace alone, they're not going to beat the blue car of Mateus Laced today. He's led every lap from pole. Santi Arutia just set the fastest lap at over 170, 97 miles per hour as Tielitz takes a little look on Kellett. Can't get him there. And this is perfect here for Santi Arutia. Every time Aaron Tielitz moves around like that, he loses a little bit of momentum, and that gives Santi Arutia a run. Beautifully done here for Santi Arutia to hang on. Faster that time by over 198 for Arutia. The happiest driver in the track right now, Mateus Lace. Let everyone behind him fight, work, scrub, run their tires down. He is someone who's looking in his mirrors and oh, thankful that Fulton the Jousting. Ball. Contact, we think, in the back. We stay green for the moment. Ed, you saw something. There's Arutia oh. that slapped it. But in the corner before, it was Neil Alberico yeah. that hit the wall, and that was a big impact with the wall as well. He keeps going, but uh, yeah, does not opt to, to go into the pits. But both these cars now in the matter of two corners, and yes, Santi Arutia with big damage in that gold car. Will we stay green as we head to two to go? Now it is a three-car fight up front. Tielitz in third in the sole red car. Kellett in second in the aqua blue car. And up front, it's Mateus Lace, who's led every lap in his first oval start ever. And at this point in time, Mateus Lace is just going to be looking down, making sure he hits every mark. Just give your opponents a little bit of dirty air in the middle of each corner. Pay attention to your mirrors. See exactly where the other cars are placing themselves. Figure out where do I need my bars for turn one and turn two? Where do I need my bars for turn three and turn four? Looking great so far. Brazilians have a fantastic history at this racetrack in the Indianapolis 500. Can Mateus Lace become the latest winner at Indy. He's led every lap, but can he lead the big one? We are coming down to it. Main straightaway. Three cars still in the mix, and the white flag in Indianapolis. Who's going to win the Freedom 100? 
One final chance here for Dalton Kelly to line up around. You see him all the way down on the apron on those rumble strips. That's where the car gets oh so free and so difficult to control. But Dalton Kellett's going to just hang it out here and see what happens. Does he have enough? Tielitz is not quite close enough. Kellett's got the back half of the back stretch to make a move. Laced by three or four car lengths on the north end of the track. Seems to be in control. Final turns for Mateus Laced through four. Back on the main straight. Nobody's going to catch him. Mateus Laced dominates from pole and wins his first oval race. And it's at the most famous race course in the world. Mateus Laced has won the Freedom 100, his first win in Indy Lights. Mateus Laced and Carlin Racing, you guys have done it from being rookies to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway two years ago to now being winners in the Freedom 100. Boy, what a job. And while Laced wins, Aaron Tielitz got the move made to finish second, getting past Dalton Kellett. Let's go back and look behind the leader. Kellett tried to defend. <laughs> And a drag race to the line for second. And Tielitz got him by about a quarter of a car length. And that was all because Dalton Kellett went, for, went all out on the final corner, went all the way down to the apron, lost some momentum. And then Aaron Tielitz had his shot. But Mateus Laced, man, what a performance. That was a drive for Mateus Laced. Impressive. We'll hear from the winner and plenty more. We've got much more coming up from Indianapolis. Back at Indianapolis, plenty more to come on Carb Day. We've seen another good one in the Freedom 100. Good finish, but this is how good these races have been. That's only the ninth closest finish we've seen at seven tenths of a second. Mateus Laced has won his first Indy Lights race, and we've got some championship leaders. Kaiser, the leader, coming in. Jameen was second, finishing ninth and tenth. Yeah, and Ryan Norman, obviously not a great day for them in Colton Herta. All right, let's hear from the winner. Katie, he's climbing out. Mateus Laced has won at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And not only does he win, Kevin, he dominates leading lap to lap. Mateus Laced winning in your very first oval start, even with pressure from other drivers. How did you stay focused? Yeah, it was a tough race, you know, but we had the pace, so I'm very happy. The car was just amazing. I just want to say thank you to everyone, to Carlin, Cooper Tires, Mazda. It was just an amazing race. And as well, my first race in the Novo, and I, I couldn't be happier. Some very other famous names have won here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, including other Brazilians like Elio Castro Neves and Tony Canan. Yeah. Do you model yourself after them? Yeah, it's tough to say, you know, but uh, I think this was my first win here in, here in uh, Indy Lights, and still a long, long journey. I uh, hope to be winning here in Indy 500 one day. And also great for Carlin Racing to get to victory lane here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. No doubt. And Marshall, let's speak to that. Their third year, and they have already won a championship with Ed Jones last year, but it's a, it's a good example of what's available for racing teams in America. Kevin, we're here celebrating the drivers, obviously. This is huge for Mateus, but Indy Lights is also a series where team owners can come in, learn, prove, and hopefully move to IndyCar. This is what Trevor Carlin's done. So this is just a wonderful thing to see that as an infrastructure, IndyCar wants Trevor Carlin there as soon as possible. When you can win the Freedom 100, it tells other entrants elsewhere in the world and other championships it's worth investing here. Here's how the championship stacks up. So Herta goes out on lap one, but luckily for him, the two just ahead of him in the championship also finish a little further back. Kaiser still leads to mean. Tielitz is a jumper, and Kellett moves into the top ten as we look one more time at the finish in the battle for seconds. And Aaron Tielitz had a photo finish today at Indianapolis. Unfortunately, not for the win, but for second. You saved it till the last lap. Certainly, I know you wish you had more last, but that was an exciting finish on your behalf. Absolutely, definitely an exciting finish. I wasn't saving it for last. I was trying to get around Mateus for first place there uh, earlier in the race, but just couldn't get it done. Our car was good in traffic, getting runs, but um, I think they must have been a little bit more trimmed out than we were, because when I get alongside of him, he just had a little bit more speed. So, um, But a great run. i got to thank the Blardi Auto Racing guys, uh, Mazda, uh, Race Lake Wang Systems, Maury's Auto Group for all their support this year. 
Now, when you started to challenge and you started to put yourself in that position, did you lose some grip then and then lose? I mean, is this something you only had limited opportunities? Definitely, yeah, I had limited opportunities. I wore off my front tires uh, a bit in the race, and then I went really aggressive on the roll bars to try to get some front grip back, and I was even loose in traffic a couple of times just because of that when I went a little aggressive on the anti-roll bars. But, yeah, we had a great car in traffic, just the, not the car to win, unfortunately. Well, thank you, and great finish. Thanks, guys. Katie? And Jan, we know that this race always provides exciting finishes. Dalton Kellett on the other end of that exciting finish, though. Dalton, what were you thinking when Aaron got his way around you? Well, uh, you know, it was a very, it was a great move by Aaron. And uh, basically, what what happened was we had a lot of understeer going through four, and I knew I, knew I had a big run on lice going through one two, and I wanted to capitalize that and have another photo finish coming across the yard of bricks, but. I, 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 I knew if I took my regular line, I wouldn't be able to stay behind him. So I was trying to play with the apron, play, you know, get, get the car to rotate a bit, and it rotated too much. Got a moment, had to check up, and kept the car off the wall, but Aaron got me. So good, good, good move my Aaron for that last lap pass. What is it about the Indianapolis Motor Speedway that provides such exciting finishes and passes? I think it's, especially with the Mazda IL-15, you know, we have... We're going a little bit slower. We can go flat out on the whole track. We can run side by side really easily. And it just makes for great drafting. And you, know, you have a really strong field in Indy Lights this year. And it just shows all, of, all, of, all these guys are able to race hard and race well. I think that's what causes all this excitement that we see. And unfortunately, there was a little bit of excitement on the first lap between Col Colton Herta and Ryan Norman. What was your perspective on that? Well, I well, we're, we, got, we got the replay right here. So I'm, I'm on the inside. It's the first lap. And I think I caught a bit of bit of dirty air from the car in third, and Colton was right beside me. I just I understeered up into him, spun him around. And he got and he he collected Ryan. So, you know I think we'll probably take a good look at the video when we get back, because that's you know obviously you never want to have contact with you with your with your with your teammates, and uh, you yeah, know it's really unfortunate for the Andretti Autosport crew, but at least we got managed to have a, a podium finish. Thanks, Dalton. Third for the second year in a row at Indianapolis. Around the horn. Final thoughts, Marshall. We have Brazil, Wisconsin, Canada, California, and Uruguay in the top five. This yeah. is Indy Lights, friends. This is the Freedom 100. So happy we're making the future stars. Ed, how are your nerves two days away from the biggest race of your life? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, yeah, it's run so well s this week, and um, hopefully we've got a really good race car for Sunday. Ed Jones, by the way, has the best qualifying ever, ever for a Dale Coyne racing car in 27 years at Indianapolis. A fun one again, Anders. It was indeed, and uh, this place never fails to disappoint. We said that the championship wouldn't be in focus today. Well, it shook things up big time. We are just getting started, though, throughout the day. The party is rolling on. Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy, Marty Snyder, the rest of the group coming back in just a moment. And don't forget, as we highlight the biggest weekend in motorsports, our special coming up from Charlotte and Monaco. And up next, Lee Diffie is going to join us from Monaco with a report on the Monaco Grand Prix. Stay with us, plenty more coming up from Indianapolis on Carb Day.